When I heard there was going to be a new Battle Athletes anime, I knew immediately who I wanted to talk to about it. Tell everybody who you are. Hello, I am Brent Newhall. My claim to fame is my YouTube channel, now called Geek Archaeology. It was once called Otaku no Video back in the day. Maybe heard it that way. And I just love talking about anime and manga and Japanese pop culture in general. Brent is someone that I met when I still went to conventions. And he is the one that originally recommended me this obscure female sports anime called Battle Athletes. What did you think when you first heard that they were making more Battle Athletes anime? Oh, the excitement level was high. It was certainly shocking. I mean, this is not a high-profile franchise by any stretch of the imagination. And it just felt like, okay, going back to that particular well for, for no apparent reason. How did you first come across Battle Athletes? I first came across Battle Athletes in Suncoast Video in 1999. Not a lot of anime available in America. I remember it was on the top shelf, uh, and there was this this uh, very 90s you know cover art. So I looked at it, and what, what attracted me to it primarily was the sticker price. They were $15 per disc instead of the usual $30 per disc. Maybe even 20, 15 or 20, and you got three episodes per disc. And that was just crazy cheap by the standards of the time. Normally you get about four episodes a disc, again, 30 bucks a disc. This was a third or a half that, whatever it was, for three episodes. And I was like, at that price, why not? So I uh, grabbed the first volume and brought it home and uh, was immediately charmed because it was just this uh, fun very light-hearted series with uh, this wild cast of characters, and uh, I was hooked. Those discs from Suncoast were released by the now defunct Genion Entertainment. The license to both the Battle Athletes TV show and OVA were rescued by Discotech this past fall, and the new release still has that 90s-tastic cover art. I do wonder, because this was announced, what, back in October? Yes, to my knowledge, this was uh, announced in October of 2020, the mm -hmm. new release. And the, the new Battle Athletes series was announced... August 2020. I'm hoping it was fortuitous ch uh, chance that this mm -hmm. just decided to license it and then, oh, there's a new series, because it's it was great timing on their part. Obviously, this bargain anime holds a lot of nostalgia for some fans. But for it to get a brand new TV anime version in 2021 begs the question of why. Why are they <laughs> bringing back battle athletes of all things now? Mm -hmm. And I think the really obvious answer is because of the Olympics. Yeah, it, it should be pointed out, you know, the, the 1964 Tokyo Olympics were a watershed for the nation of Japan. Japan, up until that point, much of the world saw Japan as... Uh, to paraphrase a movie, uh, a, a country full of strange little people living in rice paper houses and eating food with little slivers of wood, right? There was this sort of fantasy land. The Tokyo Olympics showed everyone, no, no, this is a modern country. Um, for those of you who've seen anime and you've seen Sports Day, Sports Day started in 1964 <laughs> because of the Olympics. Like, this this had all sorts of effects on, on society that we still see today. Obviously, Battle of victory was you know, around the time of the uh, Olympics there. And then now you have um, the, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics still. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> to be honest, that is not... I don't think... What they're exactly calling it is actually what is on anyone's mind right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it wasn't announced, you know, three months before the, the Olympics were originally supposed to happen. It kind of waited until now. It could be one of those things where they didn't have the idea that. And then, you know, six months later, they were like, oh, you know, we have this thing. You know, we, we made this series. Let's do a remake now that, now that, you know, the Olympics is delayed and it's going to come out. Now we can actually do something to kind of capitalize on it. I don't know. It's, it's out. Or it could be, you know, in, in fairness that they were planning on doing it and they just weren't ready for the original Olympics. They're like, you know, if it comes out the next year, that's fine. People will still be remembering it. It'll still be a, a big thing. Like, that's that's cool. So, And there is precedent for that where um, with the 64 Olympics, like it inspired all of this. Um, I I think of like the tennis and volleyball the anime. And so yeah, there is absolutely. precedent for, you know, the country hosting the games and then a bunch of anime and manga following 
And I think it's interesting, too, that, um, you know, Battle Athletes falls into that category of female sports anime. And so yeah. it's curious um, if they, I guess we're kind of hoping for a similar phenomenon. Because um, we've gotten a few female sports anime here and there mm-hmm. um, yep. recently, but nothing that really has, like, a franchise attached right. to it in the same mm-hmm. way that Battle Athletes does. Yeah, there, um, there's certainly no high cue of female, you know, with, with a female cast. Well, I mean, there was, like, you know, in the 60s and 70s, but, yeah, yeah. but not yeah. anymore. Not now, right, exactly, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. For this new project, I'm very conflicted. I don't think it's going to be bad by any stretch, but the central theme of that original series was Akari's crippling anxiety and how she got over that. So I don't really know what's going to be the driving thread of the series. I suspect it's going to be more of a series about all the different characters all interacting, bouncing off each other. And it's going to be kind of more like an idol show in that sense. And so I think it's going to be kind of more diffuse. And what I'm hoping is it will then be able to spend more time on all the different stories. Because to me, the central theme of Battle Athletes, at least the TV series, was how sports and athletics can help you grow as a person. And I'm hoping that we see that focus from multiple different angles and how different people are able to improve themselves in different ways through through sports and athletics. At least, at least that's my hope. While the OVA technically came out in Japan a few months ahead of the TV series airing, they were essentially released side by side and offered two very different versions of what was labeled as the same story. So you saw the TV series first, and then yep. did you seek out the OVA? I did, uh, because I love the TV series so much. And that was different. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely not the experience I had with the TV series. The OVA was your run-of-the-mill, raunchy comedy, chock full of fan service that didn't have to worry about TV censorship guidelines. The TV series, on the other hand, had an expanded story, more characters, and hardly any fan service. If you want to watch one of the 90s versions of Battle Athletes, I definitely recommend the TV series over the OVA. It's the more popular of the two series, and overall it's just considered to be of a higher quality. I want to talk about uh, Battle Athletes being very much a product of the 90s. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not just really 90s and how it looks, but it, mm-hmm. you know, it, it just kind of captures a lot of that feel of genres that people were interested in at that time. I totally agree. Uh, yeah, definitely the 90s is in its DNA. It's also kind of funny because it's sort of, it's a harem anime without a protagonist. Yes, and that's actually so nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I maybe the OVA, the principal, fulfills that role. Mm-hmm, um, sure. I feel like that's always uh, the problem with um, a lot of harem anime, where it's like, this is a really good idea, and this has a lot of interesting female characters in it. We just need to remove the protagonist, and then you would have a good show. That harem vibe that Battle Athletes gives off is likely because its original creator is Hiroki Hayashi, who is better known for directing parts of the Tenchi Muyo and El Hazard franchises, which basically helped popularize the harem genre back in the 90s. Hayashi's work has been influential, but it's not without its blemishes. We should acknowledge some of the more poorly aged characters, uh, primarily Tanya and Ling Fa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whom seem to be mysteriously absent from the new series. So strange. Which is probably for the best. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It looks to me like we kind of have a version of Ling Pa in Jelly Wong. Yes, where she seems to be of the same familial descent. Mm-hmm. And what they've done is made her incredibly driven. Um, as far as we can tell, um, to the point where she literally has lost limbs and um, uh, it is still in the games. So I think that's smart because Ling Fa was very much a Chinese stereotype. Yes. Rule breaker, brat, cheater. 
Why do you call me such things? Such bad words? And um, they never really went anywhere with her character, which is one of the reasons why it, it feels like it aged so poorly. It's just like, you know, ha ha ha, isn't that funny? And then we move on. Because with a lot of other characters, you know, you have obviously like, um, you know, Jesse and Isla, who are very much stereotypes of, of their their nations. Um, yes. The okay. amount the amount of blonde Americans that had to fight their way from the slums of New York. I don't understand like where does this originate? Like what like crappy B movie did made its way to Japan and opened the gates for them mm -hmm. to make this the backstory of every American character mm -hmm. for like a good part of the eighties and the nineties. It's one of the, the funny things is that it is a, a show that is um, not particularly complicated as <laughs> characters' backstories. The unfortunate thing about like Ling Fa in particular is it's like, well, you could have gone somewhere but you didn't bother. So I really like the fact that they're, they're moving along with that. Tanya, whew, where do we start with Tanya? Obviously, there's the problematic thing that she is African and has animalistic qualities. And she is the, the representative for Africa, the continent. Yeah. <laughs> yep. She she is just Africa. All Africa is, yeah. Um, one big, yeah. Mm. Anime has never, is still really struggling with black characters. They yeah. just are really not sure <laughs> what to do with them. It doesn't help that Tanya is very much a comic relief character. Yes. Right? Like, there's really no depth to her. There's, I believe there's one really quick moment with Tanya when she loses and you just see really quick just a tear going down her face but you definitely don't feel like she's a, a strong contender a strong complex character obviously she's you know the cat girl cute cat girl yeah. character and it feels like you could do that with anything yeah in a show like that it makes sense to have a cute comic relief girl character but making her the representative of Africa <laughs> it's just mm. Uncomfortable. Very yeah. uncomfortable. With Tanya, it does feel like, you know, there were just some poor choices. But with Ling Fa, I, it, it feels a little bit more malicious because she's specifically a negative stereotype where she's mm -hmm. conniving and trying to make a buck off of everybody and also has the... A, like Chinese anime accent of ending everything with Aru. Um, so while Tanya, I feel like could have come out of a place of ignorance, Ling Fa very much feels uh, like they they knew what they were doing. And I think in some ways it makes me really hopeful about the new series um, because this new character, her character design doesn't look the same degree of like a caricature. I mean, um, she doesn't have giant spiral grass glasses. And she and she doesn't have like rolled up buns on the back of her head mm -hmm. that like pop out like party blowers. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and there's the thing too where um, she has the prosthetics, and so they are trying to incorporate uh, para Olympic inspired uh, characters, and that's a step in a good direction. So going back to when you first found the series, um, I'm also assuming you found the dub. Yes. The dub has a special place in my heart. I just, I love that dub. And it's one of those shows where that is the voice for that character, whether it's, you know, correct or not, so to speak. It just burned into me. It's going to be really weird for me to, to see this anime with different voices. On the other hand, they're clearly <laughs> kind of redoing the characters anyway, so I don't think it'll necessarily matter that much. We're pretty sure this is a sequel. Yes. Um, from all of the promotional material, yeah. this appears to be a sequel that is set 100 years after the first television series, and all of these characters are descendants of the original cast. Yeah, definitely. And I'm really excited about that, especially since it's been established people live a long time in this universe. So the original characters can have cameos if they want to do that. But we can have new characters that do this thing because the original series um, as well was kind of about that concept of legacy. I think we can continue with that here uh, without having to just copy the same storyline over and over and over. Yeah, and I think it also is um, a really good premise so that way new people can come in and they don't have to know everything that happened. So mm -hmm. this can be a good entry point for the franchise. 
My last question for Brent was, what should we expect from this new iteration of Battle Athletes? The thing that impressed me the most about Battle Athletes Victory was that I grew up hating sports, not an athletic kid, never saw the point. I still think that organized sports have have their own issues, shall we say. And I came out of Battle Athletes Victory with a profound respect for sports and athleticism as a, a noble pursuit. That's pretty hard to do. And I've come across a lot of folks who watch that series who are like, man, like I went on a ride through that show, uh, especially when you get to the ending. I think this is a very special show. And it's why I'm, I'm not like fanboying out here and I'm not like geeking out too much because this is going to be a completely different take on it. And I don't expect that out of it. Right? Like I, I can't expect the same experience out of it. But I'm very curious to see what they're doing because it is literally called Restart. Yeah. It's clearly not the original thing. It's taking their their own approach with it. So I'm 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 hopeful. It's always exciting to be in that, that spot of I know I'm gonna get something different. I wonder what that's gonna be.